Hi, this is Joseph Arthur. Thanks for checking out Come to Where I'm From. Please support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash come to where I'm from. We are an independent podcast and any contributions you can make are greatly appreciated. Sophie Oster. Sophie Oster, thanks for Welcome. coming. Thanks for having me. Yeah. What have you been doing in quarantine? Have you been writing new songs? I have. I've been working um, working on these demos. I started working on these demos for a new album before all this happened. And so we've been working on distance. I'm working with a friend. He's helping me with arrangements and kind of making these like souped up kind of demos that are, you know, better than kind of my basic vocal guitar stuff. So Mm -hmm. um, I've been recording in my closet, which has been interesting because, you know, it's kind of insulates me. Like a vocal booth closet? Like like a makeshift vocal booth. Um, I've definitely learned uh, how to be a bit more independent, um, learning all these uh, different devices and the live streaming stuff. I've been doing that like quite a bit. Like everyone. What do you yeah. think of that live stream? Well, I had a very funny experience. Like my first, I thought, oh, I'll do like a weekly show where I'll talk to people and I'll sing songs and I'll also do cover requests. And the first show I did, I had like my husband across the table. He was like laughing as he was watching me. And then I had... um I was, frankly, I was like a little hungover from the night before Uh and it started to have like an internal meltdown on the live stream. Yeah. And I was like, and then I left the camera recording and he and I proceeded to have like a marital bicker. Argument. Live. Oh, really? And you didn't know it was recording? (laughs) No. That's great. That's hysterical. I know. It was pretty funny. And then. You know, and then I was like, oh, my God, I think I suck. What's wrong with me? Like, why Why do I think I can do this? This is bad. No one cares. Like, just and I it was all like recorded. Oh, my God. You had a, like a, a live imposter syndrome meltdown. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, we all I have that daily. I have that a lot, though, that same debate internally. I mean, yeah, it's like, why? Why would why does anyone care? And then people did reach out and they're like, don't worry, like it was great, and we just think it's really human. I was like, okay, well, here I am. Here's all of me. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just putting myself out there a lot more, and obviously, it's gotten a lot easier. And I can look back and look, look at the stuff that I've I've done, and it's uh, I'm getting the hang of it. So. So was the bickering about him laughing while you were doing it? While I was, you, <laughs> yeah, I was while like, you were in a high pressure situation. I was like, you're he making, wasn't being supportive. It's like you're making too much noise and you're staring at me. You're making me nervous. He's right. like, what do you want me to do? I was just there to like help you with the the phone and the whatever you needed. I was like, I know it's not your fault. It's just um, yeah. we've we've figured out that he can't sit close to me or watch me when I do those things. So now yeah. he's in the other room or he's away. <laughs> Yeah, it's a weird it's a weird thing. I I've been doing them every Friday just on Instagram live just on my phone. Yeah. But I I want to go I want to get to a more professional level with it. Ehud and I have been talking about doing that and Jesse Mallon has been doing like he got like four camp like black magic cameras and I mean he went in. He went deep. He went deep which is like what you sh- what we should be doing. Like he's like I feel like he's like sort of trailblazing i'm trying to set up jam kazam which is like the new thing you need to like plug your ethernet cord directly into your computer and then it will right it'll take away the latency so you can actually play with other people right so i guess like my next step would be to try and do a live performance with other musicians in other places so you know we'll see Uh, both of you as musicians is your goal with the live streams i'm just curious is it do you look for the instant gratification from the fans interacting with you or do you feel it's just something you need to do because you need an outlet? Well, it's, or, for me, it's world domination. <laughs> 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 or is it world domination, Sophie? <laughs> I mean, because eventually you have to, as artists, everyone, we're going to have to make a living and eventually there's going to have to be, unfortunately, the monetary side of it and how much longer do you go 
before you say, okay, something needs to change here? So for me, I mean, it, 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 it was a, it was almost like a good marker for me and to keep myself fresh. So I'm like, okay, every Friday I need this like time to perform for people and keep that kind of live butterfly feeling yeah. going. Cause I still get that even if I turn the live thing on, oh, I get it. Oh, I get it. Yeah. I get it when I'm alone yeah. recording. Like uh -huh. now that I'm doing all this like vocals and stuff alone, I press that red button and I call it like red light fever. Uh -huh. And I'm like, ah! that's a good name. Yeah. yeah. So I just you write a song that's called a good that. Title. That's a good title. <laughs> so like I, I get nervous regardless. Red light um, fever. It's, it's a red light good. district too. Yeah, it has a it's, double entendre. Exactly. It's good. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. But um, so it keeps me fresh. I think it is good. I was kind of blown away how, how appreciative people have been. Right. Like, People are like, thank you so much for doing this. Like, yeah, uh, you know, and it, I have seen a bit of a snowball effect. I've done some stuff with um, brands that have paid me to do stuff. And then other live streaming things have reached out to me. So I think it was kind of just trying to put myself out there regardless of if there was anything coming my way, you know? Yeah. I, I felt that same thing about how appreciative people are and, and it's like interesting, like you uh, feel like you're being of service, you know, because music, it feels like it's real important to people again. Yeah, I it's it's kind of amazing. I mean, people are like, wow, you know, I was like pouring myself a drink with you and yeah. I was bouncing around in my apartment and you really, you know, made me feel good and took my mind off of things. So, I mean, that's pretty nice to hear. And you could watch your favorite artist in your underwear. And yeah. You have no yeah. idea. <laughs> but you, you're not a big fan of the live streams, eh? I, Why don't you just tell it like uh, it is? Like you, uh, <laughs> thanks, Raul. I'm just very, as a videographer and an audio guy, I just like when it first started where everyone was in week one just going apeshit like this has been going on for a year and doing a stream every two seconds and there was no quality control. And the quality control bothered me where there's artists that you work with that on a regular day would never approve audio or video quality of them going out in that level and now they're okay with it I, like nothing has changed it should be just a little take the extra 15 minutes and do it the right way yeah i mean i definitely i don't have it completely down and i'm still learning i bought some actually defunct um recording equipment that came and it like didn't work and but I do have a you know dynamic mic set up and I have um, a speaker set up and it really it does really help the sound. It elevates it. It elevates it and so for me it's it's just about because I find that a lot of audiences and I'm not trying to dumb down anyone yeah. but yeah. a lot of people don't know why it sounds good. Like why does this performance sound so great? And why does this sound so bad, you know? And yeah, they don't know. And they don't really know. And so I think it's like it's just giving it that extra shine and a little, you know, yeah, polish. Polish. The, yeah. What's the thing it's you actually you spray really on a painting? Uh fixative. Fixative, yeah. It's the fixative. To make it shine. No, but fixative I I use matte fixative usually uh. so it doesn't make it shine. But anyway, it <laughs> but just I dulls it out. <laughs> exactly. I get your point it though. It secures it. But it's, I disagree that it's easy, like, oh, it's just a little bit of effort. It's actually, like, what we were just saying right. with Jesse, like, For to actually people, do it. It's and lot. I actually, that's so funny that you would say that, you of all people, because I called <laughs> you and said, how do we do this right? And you're like, well, you need 10 grand worth of equipment. So I don't know who you, what you're saying well, now. Well, no, but, but like, you know, just you plugging know, in the simple I, microphone. Okay, I, but I got one of those yeah. little simple microphones. And it made a huge change. It makes it better. Yeah. I yeah. wouldn't say it makes it, like, insane. It's like a, a you know, I, I don't know what it costs, 200 bucks or something yeah. like that. And it's like, it makes it a little better. But still, and I'm just still going on Instagram Live with that. I don't have, like, Instagram at the same time as That's YouTube. Just, yeah, and it's, yeah. it's like... It's brought up this whole new series of like problems. Like, how do you do all this? And I still haven't cracked. Are you doing that three different things or just going on one thing or what? I mean, I, I feel like it's hard for me to maintain so many different platforms. Like, yeah. I have all of them and I'm very neglectful of Twitter, for example. Yeah, I'm very neglective of YouTube. Like, I don't have a, I have a YouTube channel, but it's all just 
the professional videos and stuff that I've done. I've recently started like dipping my toe in that wet water or whatever. It's just so much to maintain. And I it realized is. that when I've been doing the more and more it's I've been Facebook. doing it. Yeah. It's yeah, but it's That's also where your core audience what, like guess, sort of is. Do you want to split off your audience and send some people here, some people there? I don't know. It's, it's a lot. I mean, I think the people who are doing this as a business, yeah. like they're listen, it's a lot easier to be constantly uploading content when you're talking about content when you're talking about the shape of your eyebrows you know what i mean right. and, uh -huh. and like putting on foundation like i see chicks who do that and it's like well yeah i could put lipstick on like 14 times a day on different platforms but to create new songs and learn covers for people and it's work. It, it's work it takes a lot of time yeah you know yeah not to take away from the makeup no people. i mean i look at that stuff too it's great it's just not it doesn't take as much creative the TikTok effort stars have you gone to TikTok yet? No, I think I don't. I think that I, <laughs> we, nobody knows what that is. I everybody well, knows what that is. I don't know bro. how to use it. My daughter's I, on it. Twenty. She's on it right now over there in the other room. She's on it twenty four seven. I still don't know how it works. What I don't understand is like, where are these like themed like dances that everyone's doing? Because I see this like. We could, we could bring her in like, and ask her. I don't know the answers. To that. And everyone does it. I see it. Like everyone does it. It's the same dance. It's the same song, and it goes like. Yeah, they go viral. Yeah. But I, I do you know this guy Gary V? He was like a motivational. He's like our generation's Tony Robbins, but and also for like social media. You should follow. He's a good person to follow on social media. Okay. On Instagram because he because entrepreneur. He's an entrepreneur, and uh, at first I was kind of like a little turned off, but I mean I think that happens with anybody who's like a self helpy person, you know? Sure. But he's actually really inspiring. And he had this thing with TikTok where it's like, hey, you don't have to do it like everybody else. Just do your version of right. it. Which I thought, okay, that's kind of... It is very creative. It is, yeah. So I'm gonna, I'm, I think I'm going to go into it. <laughs> that's my point. Yeah, do it. I think Carmen I'm, <laughs> can help you. Yeah, I'm going to ask Carmen. She's doing... I got to say, for a nine-year-old, she's showing me things that she's doing, and it, it involves video editing, yeah. Yeah. and it involves creativity, and it's yeah. more than just the dancing where I'm like, wow, what you just showed me was a creative... Vi like, I support that mm -hmm. in a way, but I, I still don't you. know how to use it. That's cool. So you you grew up in New York, right? Mm -hmm. Where where did you grow up? I grew up in Brooklyn. In, born in Brooklyn. Born in Brooklyn. Born and, born and yeah. raised in Brooklyn? Yes. What, what neighborhood? In Park Slope. Oh, okay. Wow. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Yeah. That's a great neighborhood to probably grow up in, I would think. It was. And when I was growing up, it was, um, you know, it was much more residential. There wasn't that much around. So um, it's I've seen kind of the evolution of the neighborhood. Brooklyn was rough back then. Some certain area past Atlantic Avenue, past the wrong Atlantic, side of Atlantic. I mean, there was no Barclays Center, you know, right. so that was not that was not a place you wanted to venture out into. But um I remember those it, times. Yeah. yeah, but it was a great place to grow up. I really liked it. Yeah. Yeah. What did you do? What did, how, what did, what was your life like? What was my life like? Well, I went to, um, let's see, my academic life. I started out at Hugs Preschool. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> then I went to a small private school in for uh, K through 8th grade. And then I went to... I. I switched for high school and uh, commuted to the Upper West Side. Oh, Trader really? left for Manhattan. I don't know because the thing is about <laughs> those small Brooklyn neighborhoods is that everyone knows each other. So I was I had been with the same kids from I don't know kindergarten through you know adolescence, uh -huh. and all of a sudden it's like everyone's kissed the same person. Everyone's you know the the social dynamics are constantly shifting, and I just I was like. Get me to the city. I'm, I'm over this. Because it's kind of like a small town vibe, was it actually. Like Those real neighborhoods. Was it to another yeah. country to go to Manhattan? No, but, you know, it was it was definitely like starting anew. And um, it was it was a good change for me, for sure. Yeah, yeah I heard you say in an interview, like, um, you think there's a big advantage of growing up in a city like this, being an artist, because you get to see like museums and shows and you get cultured essentially as opposed to growing up in some place like Ohio which is where I grew up. <laughs> yeah I mean you can I mean it's just that it's so at your fingertips it's right. not that like it's not that a kid who's interested and in, and um you know bright can't find these things for themselves yeah. but they're probably not 
as close to it. Right. You know, and this is kind of, I mean, New York's, I don't mean to sound like such a diehard New Yorker, but I am kind of. Yeah. <laughs> like, New York's kind of where it's at. I mean, it's just yeah. like, that's where everything is going on. So, yeah, it's that's pretty, what I think. it's pretty cool to, to be around that as a kid. Yeah, it is. I The one thing I was thinking about, though, is I, or I always think about is like when you're a kid growing up in like Ohio, everything you, it's all existing in your imagination. Yeah. So like when you're seeing the real life of it, in a way, it in a way it could it could almost be an advantage to have it all just going on in your imagination because you don't see the the pitfalls of it. It's like this magical fantasy land. Yeah, I mean, when you're really up close and personal with it, yeah. you realize that, like, some of your idols are dickheads and that, you know, people right. are really shallow. And, you know, this is not some... You think it's going to be this great experience and maybe it's not as shiny as you thought it was going to be. Yeah. But then you also meet people who are exactly what you thought they were going to be like. Right. And that's the best. Like, did, that's because awesome. both your parents are famous writers. So, and the, and so did you have a lot of like famous people coming in and out of the household? And yeah. Stuff? I mean, yeah. I mean, they, they, you know, have a lot of artist friends. And so I grew up with a lot of people that were well known, but you know, when you're a kid, you don't really, know that you're not really exposed to that uh right. i mean you, you're not aware actually i should say i was exposed to it but completely unaware of what it meant or yeah i don't know it was it's like, normal it yeah i yeah. mean you know it's like i think that um i mean like the so my maybe this will since this is about music i mean one really funny story was my mom was in contact with Pete Townsend to wow. do to do a new play uh, at okay. one point. I felt like him doing like a musical kind of situation. Yeah, and they were like talking and he came over for brunch when I was 10, you uh -huh. know? And he's like, here, kid, here's my CD. You know, it's like, oh, cool. The who, you know? And, <laughs> <laughs> and like, you know, I, I didn't know. And my, da my dad's like, you know, he's a super, he's a super famous rock star. And uh -huh. I was like, cool you know like it just it was one of those things and then later as i you know really got do you know got doing music professionally and everything and um obviously grew up i was like wow that's pretty crazy actually yeah very you know? crazy do you remember which who album it was eminence front <laughs> it's a put on that one i love that <laughs> shit i don't remember which one he gave me actually but it was one of the one of the earlier yeah. Burn of the early albums, yeah. And now when you wanted to go into the arts yourself, was there any pushback from from your parents or was there support or was there any intimidation or like or do you feel any of that intimidation or anything like that? I mean, I think that I was a very well-loved child, so, you know, I always felt kind of like a star even if it was completely irrational. Um so I um yeah, I think they were nervous because even though they've had success at it, you know, I was going into a different field, which is nearly impossible. And then they were like, "Ooh, we don't know about this. And um, and then it was kind of, it was when I don't know, I was approached by a because I did acting, too, when I was younger and I was approached by an acting agent when I was 12 or something. And my mom said, absolutely not. But if you're 14 and, you know, you want to do it, you can, we'll talk. And on my 14th birthday, I came down. I said, I want to call that agent. <laughs> so That's they funny. were like, she okay. Kept it. <laughs> I'm going to hold you to that, mom. Yeah. And then, Knowingly, the mother was like, fuck. And then I just kept doing it and doing it. I was doing some, you know, auditioning and I was trying to, uh, um, you know, when I was like eight, I was in the, I was the singer in the jazz band. And, you know, I just, I kind of kept doing it and doing it until my parents were like, okay, go for it. You know, just right. do it, but work hard at it and make sure that, you know, you take it really seriously. So yeah, I try to do that. <laughs> and But you did you go to college at Sarah Lawrence or something like yeah, that? Yeah, I did. What'd you study? Well, there's no real declarative major at Sarah Lawrence. Mm. Um, it's quite crunchy, but um, it's uh, it operates on the Oxford Cambridge uh, system, 
And uh, so what I studied was, I did, what did I do? I did literature, writing, film, political science, and then I was taking a French language literature class, but I, I placed very high up because I have a good ear and I did well in my oral interview and then um, realized that my grammar was for shit. And so I dropped that. In French, class. you mean? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was, we were reading like Stendhal in French. It was just everyone had studied abroad. I just kind of faked my way into an advanced class and it was uh, a, a near disaster. I was like, but my boyfriend broke up with me. Like, come on, give me another shot. And he's like, no, your homework's really, really late. So I was like, okay. So it was a little bit struggle street for a minute, but did your boyfriend really break? Was that really the reason you? It was, and when was you're late? when you're <laughs> not the dog. Yeah, I mean, when you're when you're 18 and you're going through like romantic troubles, it's like your whole universe. But yeah, it's no Terrible. excuse. <laughs> I mean, even when you're 48, it's not easy. Mm -mm. You know, we learn to come compartmentalize a bit more though that's true i was watching a youtube video today about like how you disidentify with your thoughts like that's the main thing like when when you have a negative thought you're like who is this neg who is th who is this thought for or something so you're so the idea is you don't like you disidentify with the thought i don't know I'm just throwing it out. <laughs> it's on my mind. Was it working? Did it work? I don't know. I'm throwing it out there. I'm like, <laughs> I'll apply that to the girlfriend from 35 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> do you, uh, so do you do any kind of like spiritual work like that meditation or any kind of like any, any practices like along those lines or? Um, yeah, I mean, yoga yeah I, I was doing it's funny i haven't i did do a little bit of yoga it's funny that i've i felt more that i need to kind of uh do physical things that are kind of um really pumped up at this point uh -huh. which i i don't know i think i have so much energy going on right um that you know it that's what kind of what i'm in leaning towards but um yeah before this i was doing more yoga and stuff and i've done a little bit of it and it does does kind of set your mind right i have to say but it's yeah. not i'm not a habitual like meditator mm. i try to just take deep breaths and yeah, yeah i've been doing wim hof in the cold showers i got way into like boosting my immunity wait, system wait, is is that the the guy who swims in the water, yeah. it's like ice cold yeah. water. Uh -huh. Yeah, it was on. How's I, that working for you? <laughs> it works, man. It works great. I haven't. Hey, dude, I didn't get the I'm Rona. I'm joking. I'm joking. No Rona here. All right. <laughs> no way, Rona. <laughs> of, course I, of course, I didn't get tested, but I don't think so. I didn't get sick. Did you get it? No. No? no I mean, not that I'm aware of. I could be a asymptomatic. asymptomatic person, but yeah. no. So thankfully thankfully I, I was cheating to go back for a second uh, and reading your my write-up again you were in a movie when you were nine though yeah Is that true so you did act before that 14 yeah so I mean I yeah I did so um, an actual film an actual film I was a featured extra I think I had one line that got cut out and then it, now you just see me kind of running around so it was um, that kind of thing yeah yeah for sure yeah. Did that give you the bug back then? Yeah, I mean, I thought I the thing is that I wasn't aware of the camera. Like I when the camera was rolling, I was just on. And I remember not even being aware if I was in frame or out of frame. It was like I was acting, you know, and I was like in character and I took it very seriously. And so, you know, I think, yeah, even when I was really little, I was like very committed. <laughs> yeah. And as an adult, you went and had roles in many other films. Yeah, I've done some acting. I've always said that, you know, I don't know, life is too short to kind of turn anything down. So um, I'm not actively pursuing acting, but um, if by some weird chance something comes along, you know, if it's not a 
pornographic flick or if it's not like <laughs> absolutely terrible chances are I'll, i, I want to do that experience because i like the communal aspect of being on set with people i like the theater i like kind of these almost summer camp experiences with people where you get super super close and then you might never see them again that's what making an album that's is like what I too. Was thinking. It's yeah. a, those are great studio time yeah, and and it it does weird things with time. It bends time when you are in those that phase. I love that. Oh yeah, that. yeah, for sure. Yeah, like writers never really get to experience that because it's all solitary usually. You know, it's really solitary. So I think that sometimes you know, uh, you know, writers who have wanted to direct or do some some stuff like that. It's also just to have this. Commun- let me get out of the house. Let me get, minute, yeah, please. let me get out of my room. You know. Yeah. It's nice. It's nice. And you painted before too, right? Like, didn't you paint for a while, and then you like you were thinking about doing that when you were a kid? Yes. Yeah, so when I was really little, I think everyone who knew me thought I was going to be some kind of visual artist because uh, yeah. I just did it all the time. So I always had a sketchbook with me. We were talking about my parents earlier. I was taking on a lot of boring trips, you know, and so I'd have to sit through really long dinners or you know mm-hmm. whatever and um i learned how to occupy myself and that was always by like painting or, or drawing um and then once i discovered music i was like mm, this is much more fun so i was much more into the performance aspect of it and then i like to say that my kind of artistic skills as a drawer painter kind of tapped off at 15 Mm -hmm. like it's really interesting how if you work on something i'm such a better singer and musician than i was when i was that age right but i'm exactly where i was when i kind of put down the pencil so it's interesting yeah you can do both though i do both i paint as well it's i I mean yeah i love it i just you do them on the same level almost on on your end yeah as far as effort and commitment and yeah, I love painting. I, I want to become a painter when I get older. <laughs> <It's nice. laughs> Seems like an easier way to make a living. Oh, yeah. You get to kick it in your art studio <laughs> and be like, hmm, time for lunch. <laughs> I, think I'll have, I think I'll have lunch. I think I'll have a two-hour <laughs> lunch now. Hmm. Maybe I'll take a nap and then paint a little bit more afterwards. So you funny. know, like that sounds about right. <laughs> yeah. Whereas with a musician, you got to like, I got to go on tour. I got a sound check. I got to lug this it's, here. It's That's not true. an easy we got, profession. We got to go to the radio station. Yeah. <laughs> it's rough. Did you do a lot of touring or anything? Have you experienced that a lot? Or? Oh, yeah. I was just thinking you were remi- reminding me of this. Uh, actually, when was it? So it was last spring, probably, I don't know, in April. And um, we... Where were we going? I can't remember where we were going, but we had driven to, we got on a train and it stopped in Venice Mm -hmm. and we had- Italy? Italy. And we had 20 minutes to make this plane or something. Mm. And I just remember like being, being like, you know, bum rushing it to the, to the airport yeah. up this kind of like steep canal and then taking a moment with like all our shit to go holy shit we're in venice like this is amazing <laughs> right. and then just you know like the sweat and the i i mean it was crazy that was a it, i was working with a another tour manager at the time and and uh she she put things very 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 close together as we discovered but we did make it so so did she get fired after that (laughs) i am working with someone else Uh, (laughs) (laughs) yeah that's wild so but you made it we made it yeah i lost a hat in the process but i um but we made it yeah but it was pretty incredible because especially touring in europe there's uh you know, you're so concentrated on getting to the next place. And it was this really funny moment where I just looked off, looked out and I'm like, oh, my God, I'm like, I'm in Venice for 20 minutes. This is crazy. Yeah. You can miss it. You can like 
those experiences they're they're so amazing but you're you're swept up in the sort of uh, urgency of everything you can definitely miss it yeah i mean the last tour i did i people were like oh my god that's so exciting you're in london you're here you're there and i was like yeah, i didn't see anything could Nothing. have been Hackensack, New Jersey, for all I know. Yeah, because you're staying in these really, you know, shitty places, and most of the time you're staying not in the central part of town. Like in, when we were in London, we were staying outside in the suburbs in this really, 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 really bad hotel. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think I've stayed at that hotel. <laughs> you know, the bed just kind of mm-hmm. like sinks in. And I was sharing a room with my friend and, you know, there's this much space, like, between the two cots, basically. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It could either be, you know, it was actually lucky to, to that she was on the road with me. She plays piano. And um, if she hadn't been there, I think, I, you know, it could have been a really depressing experience. Instead, it was really funny because it was just so terrible. Right. So bad it's good. So bad it's good. <laughs> yeah, I used to. Li- I got to live in London for a time too, which was awesome. Did you ever live anywhere else, like uh, besides New York, or have you just been a lifelong New Yorker? N- not for I, you know, for a couple months at a time, but never for over a year, for example. So, so no, I've always had my permanent address here. Yeah, that's the thing when you're from here. It's a real hard place to escape. Well, because I feel like I do get to, es- I mean, except for right now, I do yeah. feel like I get to escape a lot. Yeah, it's a hard place to leave because it seems like it's one of the best places to live. If you're, I guess if you love it. Some people think it seems like torture, I guess. Yeah, I mean, but. you know, people are of different camps. And I totally get why people get overwhelmed in New York. It's so, yeah. It can be overwhelming. But um, You know right away the city either eats you alive and spits you out or you love it. It's yeah. one. It's one or the other with New York. Yeah. yeah. Uh. But lately, I've been thinking about an escape plan because of all this wildness and because of the rumors about the second coming COVID. Part, second coming of Christ. COVID part two. <laughs> you yeah. Know, like, yeah. And part two. that kind of shit. Like, does any of that freak you out, or what do you think? Um. I mean, I think. Sure, it freaks me out. I mean, I had like I had a pretty weird night sleep last night and part of right before i went to bed i was like oh my god is the entire summer going to completely slip by is it going to be september and like a flash of an eye and and i'm like oh my god i gotta do something like who has a car like where can we go um but go upstate i went upstate once during this whole thing yeah i know it was awesome. I, I'm I'm seriously thinking about it. Um, Air, Airbnb like a cabin in the woods with your husband. Yeah. And, and try not to have any marital uh, bickering. No, we're good. <laughs> it's so funny because we've been completely like easygoing throughout this entire experience, and and uh, and that our one like little bickering thing is caught live on camera. But hey, so it goes. <laughs> Where? Did, how'd you guys meet? How long have you been married? We got married last September. Um, Congratulations. Thanks. It was, we did it at my parents' house. It was really small. And then I went on tour and he went and he's a photographer and he was all over the place. He was in Japan and um, I think he was in China. He was in South Africa. He was in Kenya. So we just kind of were like, high five. And then like went and um so we haven't had any break from our lives actually i think the honeymoon thing is a nice thing to do the, and yeah the quarantine was the honeymoon the, the, coro- <laughs> the i called it the corona moon the corona moon. until until i was like we need to start doing stuff um That's yeah funny. how did you guys meet we met on a dating app Oh really? Mm-hmm. Which? Oh, you don't have to say which one. Thank you. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's modern. It's a modern romance. It's a modern romance. Nice. We started talking when I was on a tour, actually, mm-hmm. and um, and then we met. We just started talking, 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 and and then uh, we met. 
we met officially at two o'clock in the morning after I got after I came back to New York because I went on a European tour and then I did a East Coast tour. And so my last show is in Connecticut. We drove back to Greenpoint. And y'all were texting while you were driving back and that kind of I thing? I was like, hey, like, are you awake? Do you maybe want to meet and get a drink? And so I pull up to this bar That's awesome. with like a full <laughs> That's like awesome. a suitcase, <laughs> a suitcase, a guitar. I'm in a full bodied sequin suit uh-huh. and like two like princess Leia buns on my head and like glitter everywhere. So you were like, I don't want to waste this vibe with like just going home. Like, and that after show energy of like, you're riled up. You got some. Uh, I like, mean, let's, let's be fair. I was like on. five drinks deep. Exactly. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> hey, are you awake? <laughs> hey, by the way. I was like, I think I just have enough liquid courage to meet you now. Yeah. <laughs> and, I don't uh, want to have to gear all this all back up tomorrow. No. And I'm like, it's funny to like, it's a funny experience. Mm-hmm. Um, so then we, I don't know, we hung out like till, I don't know, five or something in the morning. And I, I remember I peed in between two cars, like in the middle wow. of the street. And then I was like, that's Bye! when, that's when he knew you were wife material. He was like, <laughs> <laughs> like, she's the one for me. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. That's what he says. Actually. Oh my God. He's that's like, great. He's like, when you drop trout and piss between those two cars, that's exactly what I my knew. Kind of girl. <laughs> my kind of girl. I could live the rest of my life with her. Yeah. <laughs> I think I said something like, do you dare me to pee? And I was like, <laughs> and I, I peed in the street. I don't know. It was like, I just had this energy from like, I had been on the road for like three months or mm-hmm. something. And so it just kind of, continued um it but does yeah, that it to you out. the road does that to you it makes you it makes you loose in You're, a way that's good i think yeah it is it is good i mean it's i i like i really actually enjoy it not all aspects of it but mostly i enjoy it because it takes the kind of i don't know chatter out of my mind yeah because i just am going from point a to point b and you're just so focused on the things at hand that all this anxiety of like the future kind of disappears Mm -hmm. and the self-doubt kind of goes away or the bolstering of the confidence is there unless no one shows up to your show (laughs) well yeah that that can happen too that's true but um but yes (laughs) mostly it's true (laughs) mostly that (laughs) so that's cool so then so you guys met then how long ago did you meet Three years ago. Three years ago. Oh. Yeah. So you dated for a while. Yeah. But there was some sober dates too, I guess. There were sober dates too. Yeah. There was, you know, yes. Where you actually <laughs> went to the bathroom in a bathroom. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But there was a, like, we had, you know, we were very excited when we first met and, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. Not not as a segue, but does that why your album's called uh, History Happens at Night? Yeah. Yeah, my two song EP is is definitely about um, that night <laughs> where history happened, where you peed between the cars. Exactly. I mean, no, it's about yeah, it's it's definitely about this new like chapter in my in my life. So one song is this really happy song, if I could, and the other song is about our first uh, fight. So so the little the little you know um, the little EP is uh, definitely about all that stuff. What's yeah. the video with the ca- the two dancing characters on the train and uh, what's that's for if I could if yeah. I could right yeah. I like that yeah thanks yeah that's good who did who choreographed that video or wh- who put that together that seems well done so I I it was me Spencer my husband and his um his friend Ted King who's a, a cinematographer and so the dancing was well I I kind of was like prancing down the street being like like this <laughs> and so mm-hmm. i we we all did it together i was uh hopping around with with them with a, a boom box so they had the beat of the of the music and um i came up with the concept so yeah yeah and it's basically like what well, i i like it because it's like almost role reversal like the woman stalking the man yeah exactly yeah. and also so um yari jones who's in the video is a uh 
trans activist and actress and um she's doing really well she just did the calvin klein campaign and she's a very good friend of ours and then basit who's also in the video was on uh the lgbtq are you the one on mtv Mm -hmm. which is basically a dating show where everyone's attracted to everyone Mm -hmm. and um and they were friends and she should she suggested they i'm using the correct pronouns right they, they don't the identify part. as he or she exactly they, they okay yeah um and if you're a kind of grammar nerd like me then it gets a little difficult to be honest but i'm definitely getting with it um right. but yeah i wanted to show this kind of story where i don't know love is love and you know it's uh it's about a feel a feeling that is should be universal you know I felt like it was interesting, like in the deli where, in the bodega or whatever, where um, the character who I identified as female, Mm -hmm. uh, let's say. Yeah, she goes by she. Oh, she goes by she. Okay, cool. Was um, like, was waiting in line, like obviously just picked a couple items to buy to go in there as an excuse to follow the character I'm identifying as. And one of them's toilet paper. And one of them's (laughs) toilet paper. I was like, exactly like. What's with the toilet paper? Like, <laughs> what a weird choice. It's because it's like, it's, I, you know, it's, you know, like, it's, why roll a toilet paper? Because it's like one of those moments when you're so nervous in front of someone and you're like, what do I do? And then you grab like, right. it's like it could have even been like a big box of Tampax, you know what yeah. I mean? But it's like, it's this kind of. Uh, so it was awkward on purpose. Awkward on purpose. Yeah. Definitely. And it's kind of like more like I, I heard you say like, uh, yeah, it's more of an upbeat song. And like mm-hmm. when you were saying like when you first started, you made much more sort of like melancholy ish m- music. And then you wanted to make more sort of music to help people celebrate or music. It was a more poppy EP. Yeah. Music, yeah. music for dancing and shit like that. Yeah, because I think also it comes. First of all, it comes with, you know, developing as a person and the ups and downs that you go through personally but also Mm -hmm. um the more i play live the more i go out on the road i'm like god i need to write some dance songs like because upbeat numbers i'm like i have so much energy and i was like there are so many Uh mid-tempo songs in here and there are so many like ballads and i love doing that but you know for the amount of energy that I have, I'm like, I really got to make sure I, I set some BPMs here because mm-hmm. like I need to amp it up. <laughs> yeah. I think when you're older, like when you're younger, you like you, you can go like you can identify with the sort of sadness of life and you sort of lean into it. When you're older, you've had enough of that and you're sort of like and also you maybe have had periods of being overwhelmed by it. So you learn how to, you don't want to lean into that. You want to actually go towards the light more and you sort of actively, so it makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's like, and I'm not saying that it, it won't happen again, but I, I, I definitely feel like let's, let's be joyous. Let's use this as a, an escape to have some fun. I mean, it's not that serious. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You got to have some, yeah, you got to have the dance. Yeah, exactly. What was the other song about the first fight? What was that about? Oh, I mean, we... What was it we called? Got, we, that's called Leave the Door Open. And we just got really, really hammered. And we were, like, passing a bottle of tequila back and forth on the floor while, like, kind of laughing and then also having this very serious conversation that shouldn't have been happening while anyone was that inebriated. And... um we just kind of got into it and I had had a really shitty ex-boyfriend and I kind of started to test him. Like I started to just see how far I could poke to make sure that he was like the guy for me. That he didn't what respond with aggression or something like no, that? No, so he was like, I'm not doing this. And he walked out of the apartment. I was like, what? And he went down, hopped on a city bike and went over the Williamsburg Bridge and went home. Uh-huh. And he was like, I'm not doing this with you. I'm not doing this with you. I was like, what do you mean? I want to fight. Ah! You were trying to provoke him. Put your dukes up. 
let's get it out. Mm -hmm. But no, he didn't want to do it. And then it's like, you feel kind of silly if no one's fighting back with you. Yeah. They just leave. That, that's some ninja type shit right I there. I know. And I was like, oh, he's the one. Yeah. Okay. I, so. It took me forever to learn that, that when somebody was trying to provoke me, that they were trying to provoke me. Like yeah. they knew they were trying to provoke me. I like, it took me until I was like 45 to figure that out. I learned that so late in life. The hard like, way. I learned it the hard way and wasted so much energy trying to explain yeah. something that they already knew. I mean, I think it was also both of us had been pretty burned, you know, and then we both had our different ways of trying to navigate this new relationship. And um, his, like, like, his, like OK, so like his thing was to tell me his entire detailed romantic past on our like third date see that i disagree with and that I, approach and i and i was like <laughs> and i was like um oh i my. liked him with the williamsburg bridge thing and that I'm was like, I'm like <laughs> um this is a lot of information that i don't need to know right. and then basically we got drunk and i started pro i was like well, what about this what about her what uh -huh. about that and so we just started like getting into it um and yeah we both made mistakes i shouldn't have pressed him so hard and he shouldn't have detailed his entire history to me but you know we now truce out there mm. i know everything how does the song good. go huh how does the song go the song what are the lyrics uh, let's see and does he love it he goes uh, baby would it be fair to say i got caught up in my own way and i slipped and crossed a line i'm sorry I was something something drinking too much wine to pass the time, and then I da, 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 da. it's something like yeah, that's yeah. how it starts out. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> Is it, do you want to start a family of your own, or do you think you want to like stay like just as like? Uh... No, I love kids. I would yeah. love to have a have a kid, but I you know it's definitely there is some. I'm like, oh my god, money touring this. We're always traveling. Like obviously not now, but. Um, but yeah, you get a little anxious about it. But I honestly don't think there's any right or wrong time. Probably just have to do it and just deal with it. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing about the artist life, especially like a musician, because like somebody just approached me to to get take a, a to, to take a dog, and I really do want to get a dog. But I told you not to. A couple different people told me not to, <laughs> and finally I let it go. Based on the fact that I have a dog and a kid, I know you don't have a kid, but it's. But when, a, the artist's life is but just the like she's saying. Life, it's just like it limits you in some way because it's like you start thinking about it. You're like, well, if I got to go on tour, what am I going to do with the dog? I mean, I probably. Well, you remember Sean Mullins? You you met him, right? He, yeah. He was famous. Uh, he's a singer songwriter. Well, he's and famous no, for no, bringing his dog in the '90s. Throughout the entire '90s, he never went anywhere without his dog. Toured with him, yeah. and, like. You Everywhere. Need a, you need a small dog then. Right. Well, his dog wasn't small, but And he, one kid. Yeah. And my friend Alex Wong, who's a singer-songwriter in Austin now. Well, then why travels, did you tell me not to get the dog? But he travels. Why didn't you get come with this kind of encouragement he, before? But he, dude, that dog is his life. He goes everywhere with that dog. He takes her to shows. He gets her into the venues. He flies with her. It's just like, it's a lot. It's a lot. Do you have a dog? Any, I do not. Any no. pets? No. Yeah. I have, but I did have a dream about my old childhood dog last night. We were having a conversation. <laughs> you and the dog? Yeah. What was that like? Weird. He shows up a lot. I mean, I, pets are very close to you, you know? I mean, he died when I was 18, and I he comes up in my... Mm. I think about him all the time. Sometimes when I go to my parents' house, I think he's going to jump up on the door. And, um, and yeah, he comes up in my, my dreams a lot, so... I had a weird dream last night where, because uh, I, I just had this this reissues coming out and Rolling Stone just did an article on it. Mm -hmm. that came out today, but I had a dream about that. Yes, last night, and in the dream, the article came out, 
and The Rock retweeted it and said that he was going to check out my music. <laughs> the Rock? <laughs> Dwayne Johnson? Shout out Dwayne Johnson. Dwayne Johnson. Let's, let's manifest it. I swear it. to God, it's the weirdest <laughs> random, like I don't have any kind of rock obsession or anything like that. <laughs> so I don't, funny. It was so. No posters in your bedroom? No, coffee. I swear to God. <laughs> I don't know. And that's a, an embarrassing dream, by the way, too. Like, But still. That's funny. He's like has all the rock memorabilia. Yeah. <laughs> I did like that show on HBO back in the day. Oh, Ballers. Ballers. I yeah. love that show. Great. Yeah. He's a great by he's a great fucking actor. Isn't he the highest paid actor in Hollywood? Uh, action star. Yeah. yeah. He's yeah. he's amazing. He is am- honestly he's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Uh, he is. Tell yeah. why? Just acting wise, career wise, yeah. just what he made for himself the things he support he's just like a great fucking dude get the rock on here yeah. i would love to if anyone knows him please reach out with some information i'd love to have him on so what are you working on now are you working on new songs or what i am working on new songs um yeah i have i'm yeah I have a lot of new songs some acoustic yeah. ones for the quarantine days or what is what's the vibe is it are you still writing the up tempo ones or what? Yeah, I just wrote um, song uh, called uh, "Lifeguard in the Rain," mm-hmm. which is uh, very up tempo. And um, so I'm working with my friend who's kind of putting some, you know, drums and not. Mm, did we put real drums on something? Programming think, stuff. Yeah, he's programming some things around um, kind of what what I've been like discussing with him. And so they're sounding pretty, pretty good at this point. And so we're just kind of navigating how to keep going. I think we're kind of trying to get about six or seven together to show my label who has to kind of sign off on everything. BMG. Oh, okay. Yeah. Before that you were on Sony red, right? Yeah. That's just distribution. Yeah. So, and it's funny because BMG and Sony used to be together, but, um, so no, I have a label and publishing deal with, with BMG and, um, so yeah, they have to sign off on. I got a publishing deal with BMG, not a label deal. I don't have any label on it. Well, I guess real world now again, because of this reissue, but do you work with the A&R guy or? Yeah. 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 The same one or does it change around? Well, there there's like a whole team, you know, everyone has their different their different hats that they that they wear. Um but uh Yeah, we'll see. I'm trying to just keep moving. And the whole BMG story was with your previous album that you were shopping it around for a while, right? Yeah, so I I made my last full record, full length record with Tor, with Tor Johansson in Sweden, yeah. and um, that was an amazing experience. That was really unlike anything I've maybe will do or have done in the in the past. Um, so yeah, so we did it in two. I think we finished in two thousand sixteen, late two thousand sixteen, and then it just. I kind of was knocking on doors for a long time until they finally, BMG finally picked it up, and then, um, and then we had to wait more. So it what didn't come the, out. The until label, the label before that, did they not want it? So I had a a deal with uh, Sony Europe fall through. I had to start shopping all over again. Um, I really wanted support for this record. You know, and so um, because when you went out to Sweden, you assumed they were going to put it out for you. No, no. I went out and did that record completely on my own with tour in the hopes of, you know, securing something after the fact, which is what ended up happening. But, um, you know, I'm I'm someone who just needs to keep moving regardless of what, you know, people if people are going to like approve of me or not i just want to keep going so and then i'll kind of apologize later i guess so that's a good way to go yeah <laughs> i don't like i don't know how important labels are anymore, anymore right. i mean i guess if you get a lot of support or money and yeah. and stuff like that but otherwise it can almost be diminishing returns because you're assuming they're going to do more than they do and then so nobody does anything Absolutely. Where, but whereas I, if you're independent, 
you go for it because you know nobody is doing anything. Yeah, absolutely. But I, I do think that even even though labels aren't doing even as, half as of what they used yeah. to do, yeah. it's um, there is still still certain things that I don't have to deal with, and that you know people who are kind of experts in that will do for me. And there is some there's more budgets for things, and yeah. um, so so far so good. We'll see. Do you ever get like sick of the whole rat race of it all, like likes and this, that, and the other, and all that? Does that? Do you ever get like burned out on all the the way the the world operates in in the attention? Yeah, I mean, sphere? I get, I get really burned out on like streams and like you know how many you know I'll see numbers. some yeah numbers 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 I'll see some some person I've never heard of and they have like a bajillion streams on Spotify. I'm like, right. who is this and why? And right. how? <laughs> it's all right. rigged. <laughs> like, how, why, and who are you? <laughs> and you never heard of them, and they have like 400 million followers on this, and that, I'm and the like, other. And I'm like, who are you, and what are you doing? I mean, you know, it's just, it's it's unbelievable. And I don't, um, you know, totally understand it. But you can't, like, you have to kind of... Tunnel vision. You have to tunnel vision and diver- and not compare yourself it, 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 it becomes like some kind of spiritual practice of just like detachment and and also just moving forward with like without attachment to results in some kind of way. But then again, the results are also a reflection of what you're doing. So you have to sort of pay attention to a degree, yeah. but not too much of a degree to where you get discouraged by by those kind of things. Absolutely. You know? Yeah, totally. Yeah. And and in the whole quarantine and you're recording new songs, are you is the label still discussing anything with you or they're not in yeah, the so picture? What 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 do they see as plans as as that discussion happened? I mean, I sent them so we because you know BMG has such a major catalog, um, they gave me um one one thing I did um that wasn't original was I did a you know, a new cover of a, a famous song in their catalog. And so that's going out to the try Tina to Turner cover. Yeah. So it's going to, you know, it's, <laughs> for, it's for like, I did a, I, I did a, t- uh, the, this, what is it? The best by Tina Turner. Simply the best. So it's like, it's a, like a slowed down, like romantic, very like heartfelt version. Um, and so that's, you know, going is that out the video to with the horse. Yes. Her riding yes. on the horse. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, so that's going out, you know, for for sinking pur- purposes and stuff. So that's something I did with them, and then I sent what them. What does that mean? Sinking, like you, for TV shows. Oh, to get TV, uh, spot. Uh, movies. commercial got it, got movies, commercial. whatever it placement. is. Placement. Right, placement. Right, right, yeah. Right, okay. Um. So that's also an advantage because you have a whole sync team there that will, you know, work with you and yeah. stuff. And, and then your songs will go out to the sync and everything. Um, and then I sent them. But one that's the publishing side. More than the label side, probably. Yeah. But they're all kind of working Kismet. together. Kismet. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, I, yeah, I sent them one demo that's pretty finished so far. And they say keep going. So I was like, okay. And you had a song on the John Tortura movie, your song Mexico. Yeah, exactly. For three minutes, I was like, oh, that's that was fun. That's amazing. Yeah. 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 Three. I mean, usually you'd get, you know, a couple seconds or something. But yeah. Yeah. It was a whole scene in the in Joe the movie, got the so closing cool. credits of Shrek, too. Well, all right. that's that's also a that full a song. Long, long time ago. Yeah. That's a that's a lot though. Yeah. That's a dream <laughs> yeah. to do the end credits <laughs> or like the beginning of a movie. Yeah. Yeah. Which which John Turturro movie was it? So it's a new one that came out just came out called uh, the Jesus Rolls. It's a uh, based oh, the on one. yeah. The, it's uh, based on the Jesus from the Big Lebowski. Oh really? Mm-hmm. That's it, is it out? Yeah, it's out. Oh, I got to watch, watch who, it. Who yeah. who directed it? John. Oh, he did. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. He's a good director, isn't he? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Did you meet him or just? Yeah, say, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. I went to the screenings. I've seen. I saw it like three different times. Yeah, it's awesome. Did you write the song for that or no? He just no. Used it. I just I wrote it. Um, and then they, and they picked it up because they were re-editing the film. They had just like any anyone else. They were having some uh. uh 
troubles with you know getting the with the distribution and stuff and so they need to re-edit it some stuff and then ended up uh it's basically the gypsy kings and my song in the whole movie so it's pretty cool <laughs> that's it yeah wow the whole soundtrack <laughs> is basically the gypsy kings and then you know you have my song come on so it starts on the radio in the car and then it starts coming like in the whole scene so nice. it's very and cool what's, what's john like um, and how he's do we awesome. get him on the he's podcast? <laughs> <laughs> he's awesome. He's a great guy. He's super nice. Yeah. Fuck his character in the Big Lebowski is just amazing. <laughs> the Jesus. So that's his character, and yeah. then the 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 Cohen brothers like added his original character into the Big Lebowski. I did not know yeah. that. Yeah. Where did he come up with that character? Do you know? I don't know, but it's definitely, it's his, he like, he owns the Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm just curious as to how they found out about the Jesus, like, or, or did he just go, hey, I got this character. and then so he got have, I think they're we old friends. On, we'll ask him. I think they're old friends, so I'm not sure. I don't know. That's a story I can't tell because it's not my story. That's funny. I gotta check that movie out. What's yeah. the What's the movie like? The movie's hilarious. Is it just a comedy kind of thing? So or? it's based on. The movie is based on a um. A move a French film from the seventies, um, with Gerard Depardieu, and it's this these three. It's a road movie basically, oh, okay. and um. The title is completely escaping me, but. Uh, no, I'm not going to Google it. You, yeah. you can you can figure it out. Okay. <laughs> but it is based. It's it's using the character of the Jesus, and then it's also based on this this French film. Does he bowl in the movie? Just like that? yeah. Do you bowl? Have you ever bowled? Oh yeah! Come on, yeah, yeah. I've bowled. Come on, I I'm miss bowling. I don't. <laughs> I do, man. I, I, that's one of the, what is the first thing you're going to do when this quarantine ends? And when do you think the quarantine's going to end? I don't know. I'd really like to go swimming. Yeah. Um, and I'd really like to go to a dance party. Yeah. Um, and I'd really like to put on dress. <laughs> and play music live again. And play music live again. When do you yeah. think that? Do you have any idea of when you think that's going to happen? What is, what's your take on it? Definitely not. I mean, definitely not this year. No. No, I don't think so. Unless it's like small performances, maybe small performances, but definitely not large concerts. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just like an infestation waiting to happen. So, yeah, but it seems like people are like the lockdown is ending. It feels like it just seems like nah, I think it's just because it's really nice out now. I don't know. People, are, do people, that, yeah. people are getting like real antsy. Like, I don't care anymore. I don't Test know. my limits. Feels like we're getting less and less masks out there too. Like, I get really annoyed with that though. And for our listeners, say. we are socially distanced. Yeah. Sitting outside. And everything's been wiped well, we're down. We're not quite outside. No, we're still outside. outside. It's like in a patio area. Yeah. Or it's outside <laughs> inside. Yeah, it's outside inside. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So you're going to record these new songs and put out the album or you, and you'll obviously wait for the quarantine to end so that you could maybe tour for it and support it or that's not a concern of yours right now? Yeah, I mean, I think the thing is, is that there's a couple of steps. So once I get my demos in place, I think that the um, the next step is that I have a conversation with the label about um, producers. I know that they have some people in mind. So together, I think we'll... We should we're going to talk about um are you eyeing anyone i have a whole list but um there was uh blake mills was someone that i was really interested Can you in. get him i He's don't amazing. know oh he oh, okay. is he but is good right he's the best but i but he was he was someone that they so you would they want a name you know so i was like okay great let me throw you some names that i really like so uh so i think you know i have I had definitely have people in mind. He was kind of at the top of my list. Um, and uh, and so I think they want to hear the demos in kind of a more fleshed out thing is what I'm doing now and then see if they can set me up with someone who has, you know, 
Is that, a is that how it works? Where you set, tell the label, I want to work with uh, John Alasia, Steve Lillywhite, and Blake Mills, and they come back and say, nah, you're going to work with this guy? I think, like, it I think it depends on budget, too, for it them and how much yeah. they want to put into it. Exactly. Yeah. It depends on so many things. Mm. I mean, a label can be like super involved and super supportive to just basically and just get you whoever you non-existent. want. Non-existent. All right. Yeah. You so know, it's so, you and know. everywhere in between. Interesting. So we think it's um, it it depends. But you know, if that's what they want to do, I'm I'm totally game for it. So, so that's cool. kind of the next step that we're discussing. Yeah. And your, and your live I know this is going to come out in two weeks or so, but your next live stream is tomorrow, I heard. At Ro you're doing a Rockwood thing? Yeah, so I'm doing my thing at 5 on my Instagram, and then <laughs> and then, um, and then then Rockwood is at 8 p.m. on their, is, on their Facebook and their... Is um, that to help support them as a club? Or is, or is that I think, donations? well, I, I know there's a donation involved, um, and... And yeah, I mean, when I Rockwood, I've played so many times, you know. So Rockwood's doing live streams now. Yeah. Well, oh. but from the Just artist's like what we house, did. but not oh. from Rockwood. Not from. Oh, Rockwood. you're not going to Rockwood. Yeah, no, mm -hmm. they're because we did one yesterday at Bowery Electric. An actual from the actual that we're like that's planning to start to do that. Yeah. Actual. Yeah, I've seen that. I saw that. Uh, I follow Katy Perry, and she did something at Hotel Cafe. She's got a budget. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah but i'm saying it's still it's same still the, the same idea yeah she, yeah, yeah, she yeah, went yeah. to the hotel cafe and they set her up and she, that's amazing she did she's it. pregnant i know <laughs> <laughs> i follow her instagram we have the same french publicist <laughs> <laughs> who's that um this woman sarah abasa and she was like oh my god you and katie perry would be such good friends she's so nice i was like oh look it cool. up look it up <laughs> i love france <laughs> I love going there. I used yeah. to tour there a lot. Did you ever tour mm -hmm. in France? Yeah, I've played some really nice venues there. In Paris? Mm -hmm. you ever, mm -hmm. What do you think of Paris? I love Paris. I mean, you know, even if my grammar is not that good, I still speak pretty well. So um, so it's nice to kind of speak the, speak the language. And um, I love it. I mean, I've had amazing. I had my first birthday there. Really? I had no hair, you but I had my first one birthday. year old in I did. Paris? Yes, I did. Yeah. What was your first memory? I think, interesting question. I think my first memory was these, I actually wrote a song about it. It was these little patent leather Mary Jane shoes that I used to to wear as a little, as a little girl. I think I was about three. And I remember clicking on the sidewalk and then I wrote a song called Mary Jane's. So. In Brooklyn, huh? In Brooklyn, yeah. Mary Jane shoes in Brooklyn. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's pretty. That's a good lyric right there. Yeah, hey. That's why she wrote a song about <laughs> coming up, coming yeah, coming up with some with some good uh, some good lyrics today. Yeah. Uh, Red light fever. Red light fever. Mary, Mary Jane's Jane in shoes. Brooklyn. Yeah. Exactly. Amazing. Well, thanks for doing yeah, the podcast. Yeah, thank you for yeah, coming out. I'm so excited to be out. It got a <laughs> yeah. little comfortable in the hot box. I gotta say, it's not, not that bad. Yeah, I'm, so, I'm that sweating. Bad. But yeah, not yeah. that, you know. Yeah. yeah. Next, uh, we're, we got to move to an air conditioned uh, location. But it was just hard to really in the last. But air conditioning makes too much noise, too, right? Uh, well, no, you could EQ that. I mean, we had the construction not at noise Barry in Electric. the beginning. No, yeah, no. But, but when we we took a almost two month break from the podcast mm -hmm. um, when this started and really wanted to have the connection to sit with someone. Yeah. And when we decided, OK, it was time to do it again. And it's still hard to get people and artists, even locals, to come out and say we're sitting this far apart in an open space. And the, the concern is still there. And I obviously, I understand it. But yeah, yeah, we, no, we appreciate you coming out, riding the city bike down here. I walk. Oh, you <laughs> where, where? What neighborhood do you live in? I live right over here. Oh, you live around yeah. here. So oh, cool! It's really close. Like West Village yeah. type of vibe. Yeah, so it's not um, it's not far for me. I have a no. I have a art studio I'm painting in in the West Village a gallery on West Tenth Street. I love it. Oh, nice! Yeah. Yeah, it's my first experience, like kind of having a space in the West Village. It's so pretty it's over nice. there. Yeah. I'm in the East Village, but I, I, I get the appeal of over here. 
it's, yeah, I mean, East Village is great. West different Village vibe. is great. Yeah. Different, different vibe. Chill, as, the, chill. as the Germans say, different, different vibe. Different vibe. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sophie Oster, thank, thank you again. You so Thanks, guys. Thanks. Hi, this is Joseph Arthur. Thanks for checking out Come to Where I'm From. Please support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash come to where I'm from. We are an independent podcast and any contributions you can make are greatly appreciated.